Hi everybody. Well, this came in the mail today, and I thought that uh, might be interesting to look at this thing. Now, what this is is uh, it's actually a mains uh, to five volts power supply. All right, so, so there's no big transformer, but it's a little bit of switching unit. And uh, I thought we'll take a quick look at this. Um, I got this off Banggood. Came in a pack of three for about five dollars. So if you look real close at this, okay, let's take a quick look at this now. You'll see that it's got a little chip down here. It's probably too small to see. I'm not even sure if the camera can focus in that close. Right? So that says THX2208. So that's a Chinese chip. Uh, let's kind of quickly go through this. Just look at what this is. That's the chip TX208, THX208, and that's the chip that's controlling all the switching. So the mains come in here. There's some diodes here. Uh, this one here is an, uh, this here is an opto isolator, right? So it's got some feedback going on. A couple of capacitors. Oh, well, looks like they didn't trim the LEDs here. It's a little bit long. Um, big capacitors. Uh, let's see. That's um, X Chong. Or oh, sorry, Chong X branded, forty minus forty two hundred and five degrees. And this one's um, let's see what value. This is forty seven microfarad, right? And then you've got another big capacitor here. Uh, it says Vent, so I'm not sure about the brand. Uh, same specs and a one thousand microfarads, ten ten volts. Right, you have um, some other, that's a LED, so presumably that's the output. And some diode for filtering here. Okay, so this one, this has a data sheet and I've downloaded that data sheet so we can uh, take a quick look at this. Um, so basically what you have is um, the mains come in, goes through a bridge rectifier. And we see that that's right here, right, under under this uh, cap so that's a bridge rectifier goes through a whole series of smoothing caps goes into this uh, THX108 part and then that's the uh, the transformer um, some feedback circuitry and then this fi this feedback comes through the uh, opto isolator here right some transistors here and there the output is basically just this diode uh, they left out some parts, obviously, to cut down the cost. This um, CY cap here for cutting down the noise is also, I can't find it here. Um, and they've got a couple of stuff that they just dropped off, okay, just to make it simple. So, you know, basically what you have is uh, you have mains coming in here, 240 volts. Well, actually it says here, um, 200 and uh, up to 265 volts so it's 85 to 265 volts and it's rated up to 0.5 amperes so that's 500 milliamps now the Banggood page uh, which I got this from says that it's rated to 700 milliamps so well let's test this thing and see whether it works um, I like the fact that uh, well the mains side of it it's actually isolated except for this which they left out it's actually completely isolated from the secondary right so um, if this transformer is any good there's some isolation but circuit wise you know uh, is that much space that just isn't a whole lot of tolerance um, I mean look at this look at the spacing that right that's mains so everything is running way up close there so I wouldn't say this is the most um, inspiring uh, from a safety point of view, right? But um, okay, well, let's uh, solder some wires and start playing with this thing. Okay, um, before we actually uh, start playing with the part, uh, let's just look at the Banggood page. So this is the page, uh, it's, well, it's about five US dollars for three pieces of these little things. I actually thought of maybe using this in situations where I didn't have space for a big transformer but uh, I'm not terribly inspired by the design okay so 
um, down on the page here it gives us some information input voltage 85 to um, 265 uh, same as the input current it says it's about let's see 27 milliamps at 110 volts and 14 milliamps at 220 volts so we'll test this later on and the output it says is good for 700 uh, milliamps peak current 800 milliamps um, apparently this thing also has current um, current limit and uh, CC and CV constant current and constant voltage uh, modes so okay so that's pretty much uh, what it is um, the PDF the uh, data sheet gives you the component parts this one is the one that's missing right so there are a couple other missing parts they give quite a lot of specs and uh, the uh, winding configuration for the transformer as well mostly in Chinese but okay we're gonna skip all this and get on with the fun bits okay let's uh, fire up the uh, soldering iron and uh, connect up some wires to this thing so that we can test it out uh, normally I wouldn't be using such a small wire but since this thing is rated for fairly low currents I'm just going to stick these wires in here and solder them in place actually I'll just do that this with this as well no I don't have um proper connectors. I'm gonna just stick it into an IEC socket or I IEC plug. Let's get that wired in. Okay. Let's put that in place and I should really use a holder to keep this in place. That that looks about alright. Okay. Let's stick this as as well. So, this would be the, uh, let's see, that's the plus. Okay, there are three holes here. I'm not completely sure which one is negative. Mm. Oh, okay, got it. This is, this is negative. I'm not sure what the middle one is though. Okay, let's try and make this work. We'll, we'll try and find out what that middle it does but let's just solder this on okay and it looks about all right trim all the wires trim all these excess wires um, and you don't want any conductive burr lying around if possible some of this um, not really well built but I'll just get all that out of the way okay so so now we've got this thing connected I'm actually just going to stick this into this I don't recommend doing this um, if you're doing this at home please don't do what I do all right I'm going to um, get all this stuff out of the way and we're gonna see what happens when I power this up um, I'm a little bit apprehensive but let's just connect this up and see if uh, the magic smoke as well let's check before we do that, yep, that's right, that's AC. That's, oh, I'm gonna put this in here just in case there's gonna be a explosion shot. Here we go. Okay, nothing exploded, so that's good. Let's, uh, let's check if we have power. Okay, so we're gonna put this here, well, I've got that disconnected. 
let's check if we have power on this thing All right so I'm just trying to get this um, out a little bit let's see you can see a little bit more here so hopefully that's a little bit better okay I'll connect this up and we'll be right back okay uh, it's all connected up and uh, I'm gonna plug it in and we'll see if uh, anything happens okay so we do have 5 volts um, and there appears to be a 47 millivolt ripple on the voltage I think we'll look at that more closely later but 5 volts is good so the LED came on so I'm not sure if you can see that in the in the video but uh, the LED comes on red color so this is good it seems to work so why don't we put a load on this and see what happens when we do just that all right so let's um you know i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave that on okay so let's get a load and where is my load oh, okay, we'll leave this and we will use okay i'll set this up and we'll be back shortly okay so what I'm going to use, I don't have a load, but I'm going to use this uh, SC608 uh, charger as a discharging unit. This will have a constant current discharge unit. I'm going to connect that up. It's going to be powered off a battery so that I don't get ground loops anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to connect this uh, with the, um, I guess, with the... Um, meter still connected so that we can see well, this is what mess this is okay I'll find a way how to do this without shorting everything out hmm. it's not very not very convenient well, I guess that should do the trick okay that that certainly will do the trick okay so we've got all that connected up and uh, I'm gonna put this in here so that you can actually see that hopefully okay that looks like it's okay I'm going to um, I'm gonna set it to discharge okay so we're gonna set that to discharge and I'm going to use uh, yeah nickel cadmium is good for s and uh, the current I'm gonna start by discharging it to 400 milliamps and we will we will try increasing this uh, as we go along and see how that goes all right so well here goes power on okay we got five volts and we're going to start the task which means we're actually going to discharge this thing okay so it will ramp up you can hear the fan going so it's now at four 400 milliamps discharge that still works um, the ripple is slightly higher but you know we're still holding 5 volts okay I'm going to stop this I'm going to increase this to um, let's make it the rated current 700 okay which is pretty much what it's supposed to do okay let's start this and see if that works so it, it normally starts by ramping up the the discharge current. So now, okay, well, 0.7 amps. So it's actually working, still holding the output at 0.7 amps. Well, that's good enough. But what happens if we go beyond that? Okay, I probably shouldn't do this, but you know, against my better judgment, let's. Let's make it go all the way to 1M and see if... Okay, 1M. Ramping up. Oh, it's cutting. Alright, so it's dropped down to about 4 volts. But, keeping the 1M. Okay. Well, I'm surprised. First time I'm doing this. It seems to work quite alright. Um, uh, next, I guess we're going to look at, well, the ripple, it's uh, 46, 45 um, millivolts, 
guess we can look at that on a scope to see just how clean or dirty that is next so let me set that up and we'll take a look at the scope okay so we've uh, we're gonna connect this up to the scope we'll just put that up here and uh, let's get the um, let's get this scope yeah I think that's all right for the moment I'm gonna connect this up Wow. Okay, well, you have that. That seems to work. Let's take a closer look at the ripple. Um, I'm going to just change to AC coupling. And let's increase the um, sensitivity and get the trigger down. Oh, look, there are some spikes. Um, what are those spikes? Let's see. Look at that. You have some spikes going on there. Let's measure that. Let's measure. Add a measurement. Um, sorry. Frequency. Let's do this. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, we have about 3.6 kilohertz I guess 3.7 kilohertz some sort of switching noise there um, and this is of course uh, without load you know with load you, the ripple itself is not so obvious I think maybe because you know it's yeah you see a little bit more the switching spike looks like that Let's kind of switch it to a lower frequency, like maybe like that. Well, it's, you don't have very obvious uh, ripple per se, but that switching noise, that's actually quite quite nasty. Well, anyways, um, yep, that's what we have. So I'm going to take the power out before I start fitting with this. I'm not exactly fond of getting electrocuted. Um, we have 240 volts here so it's a little bit more dangerous but okay so that's pretty much uh, what we have uh, with this particular I guess you could call it step down power supply uh, it seems to work a little bit of noise I suppose it would be good for a lot of uh, uh, situations where the power is not it's not sensitive you know I mean it delivers a strong 700 800 milliamps although the data sheet recommends 500 milliamps couple of missing components lots of noise i'm not sure what i'm going to use this for just yet but uh, i'm sure i'll find something to do with it in time to come so there you have it